you say? Did you say that? Yes, sir. I did. Oh, you did say that? You don't think you need treatment? Honestly, no. If you don't think you need treatment, why did you ask to go to treatment? Um, to not have jail time? Well, 60 on your probation violations, plus 93, plus 15, 138 days. Is there any way I could get treatment? And you, you told this court you don't need treatment. Karens continue to make lives difficult for everyone around and are always on the news for several reasons. Today we'll be going through these cases where these Karens lashed out after realizing they would be spending time in jail. In December the 20th, 23, in Wayne County, Judge Elizabeth DeSanto presided over a combined pretrial for possession of drug paraphernalia and probation violation. The defendant, Ms. Bolchak, appeared confident but had no idea this would lead to her downfall. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention to June 15th, 2023 and June 22nd, 2003. Did you fail to appear for a probationary instruction? Yes. And additionally, while on probation, you did accrue a new charge, correct? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, factually accurate. The court will accept your plea <clears throat> to the probation violations enter a plea of guilty based upon your I'm sorry enter a probation violation based upon your plea of guilty and that would be technical violations one two three four and five and counsel your honor I saw the recommendation for 60 days jail I asked that my client get credit for the time that she's been in since December 1st I'd ask that uh it run concurrent with the admonishment that she's to receive from the charge that she just took a plea on. And then furthermore, she did ask that uh, during this time in custody, if possible, she would like the opportunity to be tethered to treatment. The defense attorney tried to get treatment for her client to save her from jail time. However, he had no clue her client would be leading her into trouble. All right, Ms. Bojack, did you request um, to be tethered to, treat to treatment while you've been on bond? Yes, um, just to try to... Um, have time. I mean, I don't think I personally need treatment, but um, I know that that was something that I asked for when I first got arrested. So, um, I'll I'll do the days. Um, I'll do whatever it takes. But I just, I really just want to uh, get home. Number one, if you don't think you need treatment, why did you ask to go to treatment? Um, I was trying to. Uh, have like the days made up. I don't know if it, I don't really know. Ma'am, <laughs> it, it, well, you, you asked for treatment, so why did you ask for treatment? Uh, I'm sorry? Um, to not have jail time. Oh, that's what I thought. Well, sometimes you shouldn't be this honest, and to make matters worse, she kept weakening her case as her attorney watched in anguish. You're given, given what's been going on with you the last year, you don't think you need treatment? Honestly, no. I really found myself in here. Um, I've been spending time with myself. Um, I don't know. I just... I don't feel like I need a, a, a guy or anything. I don't, I don't know. I just, I just want to uh, get going on life. How old are you? 25. 25. And now you have three convictions. Three. You're under advisement status is revoked. You had an opportunity to not have your possession charge on your record and you didn't do a darn thing with probation. Not at all. You just ghosted us. I know. I just, I know. if I get probation this time, I, I, I told myself like, you know, it would be at least six months. That That's all I would really need to get like clean. And uh, you know, by summertime I'd be, you know, working I, I really want to get a car um but aside from the job thing just you know i want to draw and make music and i don't know i just want to do things for myself she had three drugs 
charges at 25, but not a sign of remorse on her face. This entitled Karen deserves some jail time, and she was only talking herself into it. I like coffee again. Um, I don't know, just things like, I've been drinking a lot of water. I, there's just a lot of things I wasn't doing before that like I've been doing since I've been in here. Um, Oh, I have hey, ma'am, ma'am, part, part of the part of the concern, right, is when you get out, how are you going to continue to do stuff, right? That's part of what treatment is, and you don't think you need treatment. So I've, I've been to court seven times. I've been to treatment like seven times. I really, I just, I don't know. I know, I know how to work the program. I know to go to a meeting when I need to. I need, I know there's just different times. I know. So you go through the motion. You go through the motions. So you just go through the motions. You don't really receive what it is that you're getting. I really think I've learned a different. I've been incarcerated this time, man. Yeah, but um, it's. I, I don't know. It's just, it feels different. It feels really different. But we're ready to uh, hear the sentencing. Uh, we are ready to proceed, Judge. Yes, no, man, you're not getting information. I can tell you that much. Bolchak had numerous opportunities to remain silent, but continued to speak. She appeared relaxed and happy, but her expression quickly changed when the judge began to deliver the sentence. The court's going to uh, 23405. The court's going to adopt the recommendation, revoke probation, close the case without improvement, $50 probation violation, fees, 60 days jail. On 23739, the court's going to adopt the recommendation. Your under advisement status is revoked, your probation is revoked. $50 probation violation fee, 60 days jail. The court will know that that will be served concurrent. Um, and then the court's going to also order on 232479, the court's going to order 93 days jail. Credit for your 15 days. That's consecutive with 23739 and 23405. And your fines and costs on that on this matter. What? Any questions, counsel? Uh, no, Your Honor. Any questions, ma'am? So uh how, how many days? Well, 60 on your probation violations plus 93. Plus 15, so that's going to be, I can tell you exactly what that is, ma'am. The defendant had no clue that her overconfidence would come to haunt her so quickly. Watch as she instantly takes a U-turn and nearly starts begging the judge. Is there any way I could do treatment? 138 days. Is there any way I could do treatment? Yeah, you, you told this court you don't need treatment. Okay, I, 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 uh, no, you just you told this court the only reason you said that is because you don't want to do the jail time. No, that's so not. So you can do the jail time. Ma'am, I'll do treatment. I. Quite frankly, ma'am, with your um, lengthy warrant status and you're absconding from probation, I'm not sure that you would not abscond from from your treatment provider. Ma'am, I really I can't I can't do 130 days. Yeah, you said you didn't need treatment. I I need help with housing when I get out of here. I I'm sure that need. I'm sorry. I need help with housing when I leave here. Um, you know, I I have my. Okay, I I need that talking in the background to please stop. Desperation was evident on the defendant's face, and she truly deserved this outcome, having acted as if she were on a reality show rather than in a courtroom. What was that, Ms. Bolchak? Hey, I really don't... I, I think I need treatment instead. I... Matt, you were very clear. You've been to treatment seven times, and you don't need treatment anymore. No, I, I do. You know how to work the program. No, I, I, I got a little ahead of myself. I... That, that's what I asked for when I first came in, um, because I do have a drug Judge, potentially, uh, Judge, I know that potentially she might be asking for some sort of mental health treatment, but I understand the stock, it does need to be moved along. So if necessary, uh, we have to have the matter recalled later in the morning to potentially have it reevaluated. But I understand the docket does need to move along, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge.
Ms. Bolchak, I'm not ordering treatment for you at this point because you stated that you don't need treatment and you only asked for it so that you didn't have to do jail time. Given that and the fact that you had absconded from probation with this court, the court is concerned that you're not going to abscond from treatment. So at this point, 138 days is what you're going to serve, ma'am. Bolchak was sentenced to jail and probably that's the only way she would overcome her drug. Well, this Karen was taught a lesson. The next one completely lost herself after being sentenced and did the unthinkable. Did you say? Did you say that? Yes, sir. Oh, you did say that? 18 year old Penelope Soto was arrested on the charge of possession of Zen. However, this wasn't the most surprising thing about her, as she got really cocky during the sentencing. Good morning, Ms. Soto. You're being charged with possession of Zen. Uh, B-A-R-S, I don't know what that is. What is that? Zanuck, Zanuck, how they refer to it. All right. So, are you working? Yes. How much money are you making a week, approximately? Approximately about 200 bucks a week. Okay, and do you own any property value, a house, a car, bank account, significant amounts of jewelry? Yes. What do you own? <laughs> I own a lot of jewelry, all right, okay. as well as okay. Go ahead. a car. Well, how, um, how, how, how much you, would you say your jewelry is worth? <laughs> well, it's not a joke, you know. We are not in, we are not in a club now. Okay, but if you know, hey, well, you see, you know, we are not in a, we are not in a club. Be serious about it. I'm serious about oh, you're it. You very, just made me I laugh. I see you're serious, all right. You just made me laugh. I apologize. It's all right. How much is your jewelry worth? It's worth a lot of money. Like what? Like. Huh? Sono kept laughing throughout the sentencing, and it seemed evident that she was on some narcotic. It's worth money. Have you had any kind of drugs in the, in the last 24 hours? Actually, no. Actually, no? Judge, I'll, I'll make it easy for the court, respectfully. <laughs> I would set the women at this time. No, no, I'm going to appoint you because you own a lot of money, substantial amounts of jewelry. You can go and sell your jewelry. Jewelry for it. Private attorney. What is the standard bond? It's to be. It's gonna be no PTS. Okay, five thousand on count one, and then the rest should be ROR. Count one would be five thousand per hour cost found. Count two would be ROR. This is requesting ROR on count two through twenty-six. And, and refer to division fifty-one. Bye-bye. Adios. <laughs> Judge Jorge Rodriguez would not tolerate this kind of mocking in his court, so he decided to punish the girl. <laughs> Come back, ma'am. Come back. Come back. Give me the paper again. Count one would be 10,000. Are you serious? I am serious. Adios. You can feel so do come back again. Come back again. Bring him back again. I believe I heard you saying to Yes, I did, I'm not going to do it. I believe you did you say did you say that? Yes, sir. I did. Oh, you did say that? I'm not I find you in direct criminal contempt. 30 days in the county jail. The judge gave her a lesson of a lifetime and dismissed her. However, he proved to be the bigger man when he called her back two days later and reversed the sentence. My behavior was very irrational, and I apologize not only to the court and you, but to my family. Don't cry. Just don't. Don't cry. I'm not a monster. I, I know. I make you laugh. But it's all right. Don't cry. I'm not a monster. Go ahead. Tell me. And I normally don't act like that. So... Let me ask you a third question. Did you use... Did you take any... Sunday? Yes, I did. How many? Two... Eventually, the jail sentence was revoked and the bond was reduced to $5,000. Polo also completed a court-ordered...
Instagram, and the charges against her were dropped. Moving on, watch how this woman was given a life sentence and her shocking response to it. Count one, that's the first degree intentional homicide as a repeater, it's a class A felony. I'm going to impose uh, life imprisonment without the, without the possibility of extended supervision. The of Shad Therian was one of the most disturbing and gut-wrenching cases of recent time. One of her former girlfriend, Taylor Shabusinis, decapitated and dis him. She was charged with first degree side, third degree second assault, and muting a corpse. So Ms. Shabusinis, this is your opportunity to address me if there's anything on your mind you'd like to say before I pass sentence. No, there isn't. Okay. Um, very good. Well then, <clears throat> when passing uh, sentence on cases like this, the court has to consider the factors set forth in State versus Galleon. So I have to consider the gravity of the offense, the character of the defendant, the need to protect the public, as well as other aggravating and mitigating circumstances, including rehabilitative needs and punishment and deterrence, and then craft a sentence in each case that's appropriate. You were loved by your mother and your father and your brother. And unfortunately, your mother passed away when you were 12, your brother passed away from a ve in a vehicle accident, and your dad's incarcerated. Um, but I'm confident that all three of them probably still still love you very much. I'm cognizant of the fact that uh, she began using very age, uh, marijuana at age 12, cocaine at around 18, and methamphetamine at around 18 as well. And we've heard a lot of testimony about usage. Um, and um, I don't have any doubt that that has an impact on how people conduct their lives and behave from moment to moment. Prosecutors say Taylor smoked Therian's basement before she struck him with a chain dog collar. She then dismembered him and left part of his body throughout the house and in a vehicle. A statement that I read in the pre-sentence investigation report, frankly, from, from uh, her father, uh, he said on page 17 of that report, I feel like the system could have helped Taylor and kind of failed her as well. And I reflected on that because um, it's difficult to understand who people refer to when they say the system fails people. Um, because you know what? It's not the job of the system to raise people's children. The system tries to do that. The system is, is not perfect. Like our fight against methamphetamine is not perfect, but we carry the fight on. Um, people in our community... Uh, get into the system, be that the court system or the or the, uh, the system dealing with child protection. Uh, really, I, I think what they're referring to, I, I don't know, but it seems to be the government. The government needs to come in and do more to take care of people who have gone astray. And I'm not sure that that's the case. It always surprises me a little bit when people come into court and they're coming in in an orange jumpsuit and, and, uh, and chains to suggest that it's the system that's failed my daughter. Um, there's a certain irony in that. There really is. Um, and, and, it, and it disturbed me when I read that piece. I'm not so sure it's really relevant to, to um, what should happen to Ms. Shabusiness, but it was relevant to, to what I heard uh, from this witness here today um, because I, I think the system does the best it can. It's, it's imperfect, and, um, and it has all, very much to do with the amount of resources that that the public wants to put into the system. The judge clearly had no mercy and compassion for the woman as the crime she had committed was a disgrace to humanity. I'm absolutely convinced that, um, you know, irrespective of the sentence that, that uh, Ms. Shabusiness gets, which in light of these charges is going to be a life sentence, um, every human being has the ability to move forward and find meaning in their life, and Ms. Shabusiness has that opportunity just like anybody else in this courtroom. She has the ability to do that, um, and um, I, I certainly hope that for her. I sit in this uh, chair often, and I address situations where people have been, um, have lost their lives, or people have been violated uh, terribly, um, and, I, and I always indicate that really the offense, the offense in this case can't be overstated. Um, and that seems very appropriate to say that in most cases um, when there's been such a, a death or a violation. But in this case, it seems different. Um, in this case, you seem to run out of superlatives when describing what happened in this case. You, you really do. The list of superlatives don't seem to measure up to what you, what you see and what you, what you hear about. Um, and what we heard about in the trial um, 
this crime offends human decency, it offends human dignity, and it offends the human community. It really does. When someone loses their life needlessly, it's tragic. It, it really is. Despite her monstrous action, the judge spoke to her like a human and really gave a strong message of kindness. While some might argue that Taylor doesn't deserve any compassion after the horror she committed. Tragic for family and friends and community. Um, when life is taken by a, uh, from a person in the fashion that it was in this case, where the victim's remains are, are cut up and packaged in containers, it's difficult to identify a human nature in those activities. It, it really is. Um, it's, it's very troubling. Um, it's difficult to recognize the general belonging that most people have for their community. It's difficult to recognize community in anything that, that happened in this case. Um, this is a small community that we live in. So the need to protect the public uh, is an important factor the court needs to, to struggle with as well. And in light of what I've just indicated, I think it's plain that there is a need to protect the public in this case. Um, as I said, this behavior seems so removed from the, from the uh, human community as to be unpredictable. It really is. Um, and in a place where, where this kind of, a, where this kind of uh, an offense, kind of actions, kind of a crime is possible, uh, with no advanced warning signs, and uh, absolutely anything's possible then. Where this kind of a thing is, is possible, absolutely anything is possible. And from that, the public needs protection. They really do. Taylor had nothing to say and showed no remorse as the judge read her sentence. She never denied the murder and deserved to be imprisoned for life. It's an appropriate sentence first. I think the law requires that I at least um, look at... Um, at least for some of these cases. I'll take a look at uh, probationary sentences. Those aren't appropriate. They would diminish the, the uh, severity of the offense. Um, but um, at this time, given all the factors that I have to consider, um, it's the decision of this court and the judgment of the law uh, that Ms. Shabizness be, uh, be sentenced as follows. As to uh, in 22 CF uh, 363, count one, that's the first degree intentional as a repeater, it's a Class A felony. I'm going to impose uh, life imprisonment without the without the possibility of extended supervision. I believe that's appropriate in light of the findings that I've already made. As far as uh, count two, uh, mutilation of a corpse as a repeater, a Class F felony. I'm going to adopt the recommendation of the pre-sentence investigation writer. Um, Seven point five years of initial confinement followed by four years of extended supervision. That'll be consecutive to count one. As far as um, Count three, third degree, as a repeater, class G felony. Uh, I'm going to impose three years of uh, initial confinement followed by four years of extended supervision. That will be consecutive to uh, count two and uh, count one. As far as the revocation cases, I'm going to impose one year uh, of incarceration on each of those counts. Those will run concurrent. Uh, to the other offenses. The judge also generously proposed mental health therapy and psychiatrist evaluation, all while she remained in custody, serving her sentence. Services engaged in for substance abuse and other uh, mental health issues, that's a reasonable suggestion. Um, and I think I've encompassed it in the recommendations that I've made, which is there needs to be a compass evaluation and follow through with any uh, treatment recommendations that are proposed. But again, an AODA assessment to follow through and, and psychological evaluation so that Ms. Business can get the help that she needs um, while she uh, serves the sentence. I'm going to uh, order court costs. Uh, it's $538 per count. That's a total of $1,614. Uh, that'll be the order of the court. I do need to uh, indicate, as I'm required to at sentencing, um, that now that Ms. Shabizas is convicted of a felony, she'll lose her right to vote until it's given back to her by the governor by state law, and she may not possess firearm or wear body armor. Taylor didn't shed a tear during the sentencing and was sent to jail. However, nine months later, in May 20th, 24, she appears to be filing a notice of appeal with her lawyer. We hope the court shows no mercy as she deserves to spend her entire life behind bars. Well, here's another Karen who ended up in front of a strict judge who made sure to teach her a lesson. The court is going to sentence you to five years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. Jasmine Lynn was charged with carrying a felon and appeared before Judge Boyd, who wasted no time in delivering the sentence she deserved. 0105W, State of Texas versus Jasmine Lynn Gallegos.
Did you understand you're charged with the offense of unlawfully carrying a weapon with a felony conviction? That is a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. There's a $1,000 fine and state recommends community supervision. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you have any children? No, ma'am. How are you employed? Um, I'm currently unemployed at the moment. Any drug use? No, ma'am. And if you were released, who would you be living with? Uh, my grandmother. Does she want you living with her? Yes, ma'am. Have you talked to her and she said she wants you living with her? Yes, ma'am. I have a good support system out there with my family. All right. You know you're not supposed to have. Why do you have weapons? I made a mistake, Your Honor. No, you didn't. You made a choice. So why do you have weapons? You know you're not supposed to have them. A mistake is somebody gave you a bag. You didn't know weapons were in it. And then there was. So why? You know you're not supposed to have weapons. Why are you having weapons? I hang in with the wrong people. If I ask the wrong people that you're seeing, that you're hanging out with, if I were to ask them the same questions, you know what they would tell me? Hanging out with the wrong people. And I would say, well, who is that? And they'd say, Miss Gallegos. All right, I'm gonna sentence you to five years in prison, suspended and probated for five years. There's to be a TAP evaluation and Mick evaluation in custody. The judge was kind enough to forgive her prison sentence as she sent her to probation. However, she had to be present at the probation hearing to get that. But Jasmine thought it would be best to skip that. It was time for the judge to take her to the cleaner. Are you the same Jasmine Lynn Gallegos who was placed on community supervision in 2024 for a term of five years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number four on or about the 22nd day of January 2024. In Bear County, Texas, the defendant Jasmine Lynn Gallegos, the then and there failed to the report as directed to the 187 District Court for a compliance hearing as directed by the supervision officer and or the court in violation condition number four. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Your Honor, we'll waive the remaining validated condition. All right. And I don't have a trial court certification. No, Your Honor, so we are requesting to be continued. Yeah, Would you but, like the court like it instead yeah. anyway? So why should I follow this agreement? It appears that she hasn't done anything. Has she done anything on probation? No, Your Honor. All right. And then I had a compliance hearing. I always do compliance hearings. If there's an issue, people can come in, tell me what their issue is, and we can get them back on track. So I don't understand why I should continue her. We're just asking the court consider it, Your Honor. But I mean, somebody needs to give me a reason why, because she is on probation. She hasn't done anything. And to get her back on track, I set it for a compliance hearing and she did not show. So I don't understand why I should continue her. I'll ask the, I call my client. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, ma'am. Jasmine had blown her chance by being careless and ignorant. To make things worse, she stood as a statue when the judge grilled her. Are you asking the court to consider release or continue on probation? Yes, ma'am. And why is that? Because I never started it and I got released and I didn't turn myself back in, but I want to do something Sorry, better. Can... All right, do you need to speak up? I want to do something better in life. So the reason why you want me to continue you is because you were placed on probation, you were released, and you never did anything. So basically, you're just throwing yourself on the mercy of the court saying, I did nothing, but please continue me. Do you have a job? Yes. Where do you work? I mean, I was working at the subway. Okay, I cannot Texas. hear you. I was working in Subway at Pleasanton, Texas. Mm -hmm. And where do you live? In Pleasanton, Texas with my grandma. Um, do you have anybody that you care for? Yes, my grandma. She's sick right now. Oh, let's I, not do that. I, let's not do this thing where we're bringing in the sick relatives, the baby that nobody else can take care of because you were supposed to report. Let's do this. This is what can help me understand whether or not I should continue Let's assume you don't have a sick grandmother, you don't have any sick relatives, you don't have any sick children, it's just you. Why should you be continued on probation? 
Don't tell me that Subway needs somebody to make sandwiches. Let's assume that Subway doesn't need anybody to make sandwiches. Why should I be continuing you? Because I want to prove to you that I can do it. But you, you have not. But okay. But you want to prove to me that you can do it. So, all right. Any other questions? Judge Boyd was visibly irritated by her demeanor and wasn't ready to give her any slack. On the other hand, she kept on being ignorant, as if she had done nothing wrong. So she don't have a problem? Why didn't you report? Because they wanted me to turn myself back in. I'm sorry, what? Because they wanted me to come back and turn myself in. All right. Why didn't you show up for your compliance hearings? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I don't know, ma'am. All right. So, I really don't have any reason to continue her. Her whole thing is, I didn't do anything. Don't, don't revoke me. And the court reached, everyone knows, if somebody is falling off track. Normally what I do in some situations, Miss Gallegos, is because maybe sometimes people just fall off track. They just need to realize what they're looking at. And I set compliance hearings. And I'm not even going to consider, I set compliance hearings twice for you. The state only went on one, so I'm not even considering the other. But a compliance hearing was set for you to try to get you back on track to see, hey, is there something we're missing here? Is there something you need in order to be successful? And you didn't even show up for the compliance hearing. The compliance hearing was a step before your motion to revoke. Well, sometimes people need to be held accountable for their actions, especially when they're not ready to seek help. Jasmine's behavior was extremely concerning, and there was no way the judge could side with her. I'm not going to follow this proposed agreement. I don't think she's a good candidate for probation. She hasn't done anything. And she's been given opportunities to do things, and she just refuses. And based upon her testimony, she didn't want to come back because she didn't want to turn herself in. I don't know what to do with that. The court were to grant your request for um, continued probation and the TAP evaluation. Would you comply with the conditions of the TAP? Yes, sir. And any recommendations thereof? Yes, sir. Uh, would you also comply with any conditions of the um, gang ISP evaluation? Yes, sir. As well as the mental health? Yes, sir. Um, okay. Your Honor, my client's throwing herself in the mercy of the court, and we're requesting that the court continue her on probation. All right, so under cross-examination, I'm mean, sorry, under direct examination. Finally, the judge read her sentence, which was quite satisfying, as it meant that a perpetrator would be sent to jail. There may be a uh, gang with her, and part of the plea bargain agreement was, in this case, she was to forfeit weapons, magazines, and ammunition. So she was placed on community supervision for that, and she has done nothing. Court is finding violation of condition number four true. Court is going to sentence you to five years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. Uh, there's a $1,000 fine. Time and money will run concurrent. Uh, I'll recommend if she's, she stated she doesn't have any drug issues, she doesn't have mental health issues, but I'll recommend the therapeutic community or the mental health unit at the prison. Uh, you'll have to recommend it as well because I have no jurisdiction. And if they discover that you do have a mental health issue, then they will take care of it there. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. And that's exactly what you get when you take the court and the judge for granted. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we saw cases where Karens were sentenced in court and had outrageous reactions. Despite the court's respectful atmosphere, these individuals attempted to undermine its sanctity and prestige, and they were rightfully given lengthy sentences. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video, and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.